Welcome to Cuba. Today we're going to be starting a topic about forces. Now, what are forces? Well, they're a push or a pull on an object. It's an important thing to remember though that it doesn't always result in movement. So I could push something very slightly or I could pull something very slightly and the object doesn't move. So a force doesn't always result in movement but it's that push or pull. Now forces are measured in newtons. One newton, and we give it the symbol n, is equal to the force required to accelerate one kilogram by one meter per second squared. One kilogram by one meter per second squared. Now that's all well and good, but we need to have a way of measuring forces. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to build a piece of equipment to help us measure forces. Now if you'd like to follow along, all the bits and pieces you'll need are in the description box. And let's get started. So we're going to begin by making the force meter. We're going to need some elastic bands, a ruler and two pencils. What we're going to do firstly is we're going to take these two pencils and we want them to be about the same length just so that I can switch them around and create a little notch in the end here because what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to sellotape these two pencils together just like that there, sellotape together and I'm going to do it on the other side too just so that we can secure them nicely together. Ooh. So I'm going to put my piece of tape on and just wrap it around like so. It's just so they're secured together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little blue elastic band and I'm just going to... Ooh, there we go, so we can actually see it. Let's start there. I'm just going to loop the blue elastic band around the end of these pencils like so a few times till it's really tight held on there in fact if I can do that once more that would be even better so it's just a little bit tighter there we go really tightly holding those pencils together and we're going to do exactly the same on the other side Round we go, again, that should be careful you don't snap your elastic bands, some of these are feeling a little bit weak, and I don't want them to snap on me, there we go, that should be nice and tightly held. So there's pencils, attached together, now, I'm going to take a ruler, and we're just going to slot it, in the middle, ooh, if it can go in, I've really fastened these together quite well actually. But I want it to be tight, it needs to be a tight fit. There we go. And I'm going to put mine in so that it's not very centred there, I'm just going to try and centre it a little bit more. That'll do for now. And so what I've done is made sure that fits just to the two centimetre mark. And don't worry about why we're doing it to the two centimetres just yet. In fact, I'm going to put it a little bit further up. That will become apparent in a few minutes. And then to secure this in place, I'm just going to put some elastic bands around again. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go around, just around the top to help secure that in a little bit more. And then I've got one and we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to create a cross piece like this. So we can come up from here, around there like so. And then we just go around there. But it needs to be a little bit tighter again. So I'm going to see, I'm not going to be able to do it that way. So I might have to shimmy it 
No, it's alright, we can just go. Just go around the top again, like so. That just tightly secures our pencils and our crossbar in place. Now the reason for trying to secure this so much is that we're going to be applying a force to this. And we're going to be using another elastic band for that force. Now, this looks like a very rudimentary crossbow. And I don't want to see anyone using it as a crossbow. So what we're going to do is we take that elastic band that we had spare, our longer, and this one's slightly thicker. We want this one to be strong. And using the notch on this end, there's just that gap. Can you see the gap between the two? I'm poking the elastic band in that side. And I'm just going to drag it across. Oh, so it fits. Oh dear, shot under. There we go. So it fits under the notch in the other side. There. Now we've got elastic band attached onto this framework. The reason I wanted to try and keep it at two centimeters, and I'm just going to push it up a little bit, is so it makes my measurements easier. Because what we're going to do is we're going to attach, we're going to put this upright, we're going to attach different weights to it, and, oh dear, I can't get hold of this very well, and see how far down the ruler it pulls. And this will be our force meter. Now, I'm going to put a little mark on mine, and I'm just going to put a little mark next to the two, so that we can see, or what I'm going to do, sorry, is just draw a line where the elastic band is. There we go. That will just help with my measurements later. So, let's have a look. There's the completed force meter. Oh, it's, no, it's missing one little, one little detail. We've got to have something to attach our objects to to measure the force we apply to them. And so what I've done here is I've just got a little paper clip. I've unfolded it to create a little hook. And the little hook can sit on the elastic band. And we can do it either way. I might do it the other way. And then we've got a little hook at the bottom to attach onto objects. And so I can take something like a pair of scissors, like this, attach onto the hook, and the force applied, pulling downwards, we can measure by how far the elastic band travels. And what we're going to make use of, we're going to make use of gravity to calibrate this. And calibration is just it's a technique we have to do to make our experiments, to make our values, make sense. So we need to calibrate our force meter. This guy. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to use gravity to help us. Now, remember we said the force is a push or a pull on an object. Well, all of us, everything with a mass is being pulled to the earth by its mass and this is how gravity works and what we can do is we can we can use that to figure out the force acting on everything you know if you jump out of a plane with a parachute well before you pull your parachute it's gravity that's making you drop so gravity results in a force acting on all of us and that force is called our weight. So when you're standing on the scales, the weight you have is actually due to gravity. And there's a subtle difference between a mass and a weight. A weight is the force pushing down on us, but a mass is actually how much stuff we are. So if you go to the moon, gravity is actually a lot less. The force of gravity is a lot less. So our weight is less, because the force pushing down on us is less. But our mass is the same. The same amount of stuff in us. Unless we've got some chocolate bars between Earth and the Moon, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation, where weight is equal to mass 
times the gravitational field strength. That just means how much gravity is pushing on us. And on Earth, we can approximate gravity, or g, to be 10 newtons per kilogram. If you remember, we measure force in newtons. So if we know the mass of an object, such as, say, these tangerines, then we can calculate the weight of it. And that's actually a force. This is quite nifty stuff. So what I've done down here is I've actually pre-done a few of them. I've got some objects here which have weight. And it's 570 grams, that's these oranges, all the way down to 75 grams for this little toy soldier. And the one I haven't filled in is this chap. So I put the tangerines, oh, I need to switch this on, it's just gone off. I put the tangerines on my kitchen scales, still 303 grams. Then I take my little force meter, and I've done this with all the others. And I just, using the net, these weights are really handy. In fact, if you couldn't find any weights or anything, you can use these because you can just take out an object each time. And can you see it pulls the elastic band down? Now that's really measuring the force of gravity on these tangerines. And so I can look at that and I can measure off that it's pulled it down to 6.4 centimetres. And I can write 6 point four centimeters. Now, can you remember when we made this that I actually set it so that it was just about two centimeters where the elastic band was sat? So I actually need to take away two from each of these. So that becomes eight. This becomes four point four because the elastic band hasn't actually moved ten centimeters on that one. It's only moved eight because it's gone from two to ten. This one will be 2.8, didn't move very far for that one, and this one will be 1. I hope you can see that right. So what we've got here is I've got the masses in grams, and we can use that to calculate the weight, can't we? But remember, the mass here, oh I haven't told you this, the mass needs to be in kilograms. Ooh. So to go from grams to kilograms, you take your number of grams and you divide it by a thousand. And that will give you the mass in kilograms. So this one here is equal to 0 0.570 kilograms. This one's 0 0.303 kilograms. And so on. Now, if you've made one of these little units here, you're going to have to do this for yourself. You can't just copy my values because yours will be different to mine. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this data and measure as many as you like. I would say four is actually too few. I, I should have done five, really. Take five or more readings. Now, once you've calibrated this, once you know what the distance along here looks like to the force, then you can't change anything about this. Because if you change something, we have to recalibrate it again. So if you change the elastic bands or anything like that, we have to recalibrate it. So I'm going to plot my data on a graph, and you'll see that coming up next. So to begin with, we need to process our data. So I'm just going to go through that with some of my data. You know, we've got the masses of the objects that we weighed and the distance they pulled the elastic band down. Now we need to convert these masses from grams into kilograms. Now we can remember that there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. We can write that as just a thousand grams equals one kilogram. And this can help us work out the conversion, because if we divide both sides by a thousand, we end up with one gram is equal to one kilogram divided by a thousand. So if I need to change between grams and kilograms, I just need to divide the number of grams by a thousand. So, 
what I'm going to do is the 570 we divide by 1,000, you get 0 0.57 kilograms. And we'll add each of those numbers in. You can see that it goes to 0 0.303, 0 0.169 and 0 0.075. But now we need to calculate that force, that weight. Can you remember the equation? Well, we're going to reuse it. That weight is equal to mass times gravitational field strength. Just remember that's how much gravity is pushing on us. And so the weight is in newtons, the mass is in kilograms, and g is in newtons per kilogram. How many newtons are pushing or pulling on each kilogram? And remember that g on Earth is about 10 newtons per kilogram. So to calculate the weights, we just times the number of kilograms by 10. Nice and straightforward, isn't it? So we'll end up with 5.7, 3.03, 1.69, 3 and 0.75 newtons. Well, now we've got the, the weight in newtons, that force, and the distance that our little elastic band moved on our force meter, we can plot this as a graph. Now you can see here the graph I've plotted, and I've got the force meter distance on the y-axis, and the weight on the x-axis. Now remember, the dependent and the independent variables so our dependent variable, well, we didn't know how far the elastic band was going to move, did we? So that was dependent. But our independent variable, well, we knew the mass of each object. And so we had calculated the weight. So we knew that. And we were interested in how far the elastic would move. So I've plotted the force against the weight. And you can see these four points fit really nicely on this line. And the blue line is my fit line. Now, don't worry, if you don't have graph paper, you can do yours on Excel as well. You can use your computer. Now, what's really handy about this is I can now use this to work out any of the forces that I measure with my force meter. So, imagine... I put something I don't know on the force meter, I start pulling something, and it, the elastic band moves to about 5 centimeters. Well, what I can do is I can trace across from 5 centimeters to my blue line, and then I can go from the blue line and go down to the weight, and I can see that if the elastic band extends to 5 centimeters, then a force of 3.5, so right in the middle between 3 and 4, 3.5 newtons is being applied. So that's how we use our calibration line here to make sense of what our force meter tells us. I hope you enjoyed this, especially the building and testing of that force meter. Don't chuck it away just yet or take it apart because we're going to use it in some future videos. I hope you enjoyed and as always, thank you so much for watching.